Well, good morning, everyone. Um, let's see, happy Friday. It's Dr. Tracy here, and I am in beautiful Hawaii. Um, just wanted to say good morning, and um, as people are beginning to log on, I, am, I want to uh, welcome you to my new weekly IGTV show. I'm really excited for this. Hello, Mrs. Canada Globe. 2020 it's nice to see you hello zaffy7 it's nice to see you uh fit for life brass chat <laughs> thank you for joining us mrs uh curve north continent kimberly thank you for joining us it's really nice to see all of you here we already have somebody who is wanting to come online with my well zaffy just wait just a few minutes and then We'll try to get you guys up online. So I'm Dr. Tracy, and I want to welcome you to my new show, 16 and Me. I'm really, really excited to uh, be doing this um, IGTV show because there is so much that uh, I we all have to learn about each other. So it's really interesting because... Uh, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what what does this 16 and me mean? And and actually one of my followers named Jan, she said, oh, Dr. Tracy, how did you come up with that name, 16 and me? And then she started to share this story about, good morning, Lisa. She she started to share this, this story about how uh she you know she's an introspective side of her part of her life and she took the 16 year old self and she went down to the beach and um, allowed her to dream and um, think about you know the things in life that she wants to recapture etc etc and she's like is that along the lines of what this show is all about and i'm like mm, no mine's a little bit more uh, naughty <laughs> than that and and let me explain what I mean so for those of you who are watching me the first time my name is dr. Tracy Campbell uh, I'm a PhD in psychology I'm an EP which is an energy practitioner I'm known as a self-love recovery coach because for me uh, the most important thing in life is to be able to um, love yourself to the highest uh, degree that you can because without self-love there's there's nothing and I only say that because of the fact that finding self-love was something that I had to work really really hard at because you see when I um, ever since I I can remember the the way that I describe uh, the way that I have felt inside and let me know by a show of hands if you can relate to this that I felt for years that I showed up in this existence as um, a, as a defective machine, meaning that there was something very significant missing inside of me, and this this thing that whatever it was that was missing inside of me caused me to live at war with myself it was like there was this inner anger it, it was like this anger that I had I think towards the world and because I didn't know um, what it was I was just angry at myself and so what happened was as I felt that I had this missing part inside of me there was a side of me that felt that I was a bit defective have any of you ever felt that way have ever any of you ever felt that that you're just kind of missing something I mean uh, a lot of my, the the manual I call it the the memos from normal land where I just had to chat I had to learn how the normal people did life because I really felt that I was missing something inside of me well I I carried around uh, this burden you know, when, when you have that message in your soul that tells you that something is wrong with you, it's a huge burden to carry. And those of us who carry it, we, we end up, you know, jumping on, some people jump into addiction, uh, some people jump into reckless behavior. I jumped into over, um, over accomplishing 
Um, I jumped into perfectionism. I jumped into relationship, all these different things, just to try to fill that hole in my soul, that defective thing in my soul. Well, one of the things that I, I came to discover during that time is that th that thing that I call the hole in your soul, what that ended up being for me was this missing thing called self-love. And it wasn't until I was able to even understand what this thing called self-love was, what it, what this thing called self-love um, could do for my life, that it, it wasn't a luxury, it's a necessity, that type of a thing, that <clears throat> I was able to start healing. But prior to that, so the end story is, that was my, my huge fix it. And that's why as a mental anti-aging coach, um, my very first program is, it was one that, that um, I called the resuscitation. <laughs> that's like getting the self-love into you. But so that that was the missing piece, but that's not what I want to uh, talk about. And that's not really what this show is about, though. It's about the journey to get to self-love. But what this show is really about is whenever we go through life feeling defective, for me, it was feeling like I was missing pieces. I, I was just I was a machine with missing pieces. And so I wasn't firing correctly that what happens is to me was that I developed a severe inner critical voice, a severe inner critical voice that there is no way that if I had an ounce of love for myself that I, I would have spoken to myself that way because the, the messages that I would send to myself with this critical, critical uh, inner voice was anything but love. Any of this making sense to you? So I went through most of, of my life with this harsh inner critic inside of me. It, it was like there, there was um, this harassing judge that was sitting on whatever pedestal in the core of my being and every day all day long was constantly critiquing me was constantly criticizing me was constantly insulting me was constantly <laughs> scaring me <laughs> was constantly pa um, um, keeping scorecard on me do any of you have that voice inside of you that that <laughs> that keeps score about you know the universe against you. So what happens was uh, this this inner voice actually has uh, a name in the world of psychology. And the name of this critical inner voice is called the pathological critic. And the pathological critic is just that. It's this harsh critical voice that screams from uh, it screams at us from within. It's comparing our, us to others. It's telling us how we never measure up. It's telling us how we'll never be enough. It's telling us that we don't deserve things. Or then it does something, it sabotages us because it does like things like cushioning. And what cushioning does is cushioning is like, oh, I have this dream and I really want to go after it. And then that that pathological critic inside of us will say like, well, but if you don't get it, and all it's doing is, is pushing us in the event that we fail, and that being that we just programmed ourselves to fail, well, there we go, we're on that vicious cycle. So fast forward, fast forward uh, along my, my healing journey. Um, this thing that's called the pathological critic in the world of psychology, in the world of spirituality, they may call it the shadow feminine, um, and that's the darker sides of, of our personality. Those are the wounded sides of our personality. Those are the, the traumatized sides of our personality. So along, uh, along my healing journey, what happened to me personally is that I didn't realize that this inner voice that was firing off inside of me was a result of my trauma 
wounds was a result of bad programming, was a result of just missing information. And the reason, like I said, that I, I felt like I had a hole in my soul <laughs> or I was just missing parts of myself was because I was missing parts of myself. I was missing the ability to be able to love myself. Let me say hello, Robert. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Renette. It's nice to see you. I miss you, Nettie. Um, okay. So what I discovered along along my path to healing is that I thought for years that this critical voice was me. I thought that when I would say, oh, Tracy, you're so dumb. How could, how could you make that mistake? Or, or constantly saying, you know, that wasn't good enough. You know, if you, you're going to have to do better. You know, oh, that, that accomplishment wasn't enough. You're still not enough. And it was just this, this pounding judge, um, just casting judgment on my life every single day. So the theme of our show today, the theme of my show today is all about self-judgments. All right, now let me get around to exactly why this show is called 16 and Me. So in the world of recovery, one of the things, hello, Anna, one of the things that's really important to learn. Hi, Jeanette. Let me just say hello to a few people. Hi, at 2528. It's nice to see you all. So along the healing journey, one of the beautiful, uh, the repair journey, I should say, one of the beautiful things that I learned, hello, Spiro, is that in order for a person to be able to step into the next best definition of self and be able to um, release these these negative behaviors that we do, these negative thoughts or any type of a negative behavior, is that we have to make space for for that um, that new person, that new behavior, that new dynamic to to enter our life. See, when we are one and the same, like if we are one and the same with our addiction, there's no space for healing. Or if we are one in, in the same as as uh, for me, that critical voice on the inside of me, that, that forever judge on the inside of me, that I didn't have any space. So part of the healing journey, part of the repair journey is learning to create that space. And one day years ago, I, I had this thought and when people would say, you know, well, who are you? And I'm like, mm, that's a complicated question. So I, I thought to myself, you know, I think, uh, I can't speak on behalf of men, but for sure every woman who is out there, that I think the best way to describe a woman is that as a woman, as a female, we have about 17 different personas inside of us, right? And it's not a problem because we all know each other, we all get along fabulously, except for 16. Okay, so who is 16? 16 is that critical voice inside of us. 16 is that persona inside of us that has like an ego out to here, that has fears out to here, that has anxiousness and issues out to here. And it is that penetrating, judging, fearful, critical, comparison, comparison voice that whenever we try to get on in life, it just launches and, and it sabotages us. And so in order for me to make space to separate myself, that there's me, there's the trauma wound, in order to make space for the repair, that I made this space to say there's Tracy um, and, who, and who I am, and then it's out of the 17 personalities, it's 16. And suddenly with this idea that there is a 16 that rests inside each and every one of us, I suddenly gave her space and I stopped allowing her to govern all the communications that were taking place in my heart and my soul and my mind. And so one day I, I got this vision, I get these downloads and these visions, and I realized that what was happening in my life is 
that uh, the vision was of a big dinner table, you know, like the, 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 the last supper that you see, it was kind of like that. And there were 17 seats at the table. And I realized that one of the reasons that my life was not working, that I was being overrun by, by this hard, critical voice. And again, psychology calls it the pathological critic. Spiritualists call it the, the shadow feminine. I call it 16. <laughs> that I realized that out of the 17 seats on the table, 16 was taking up about 15 of them. And part of the, the repair journey or the empowerment journey that we need to go on, those of you who have that critical voice, is that 16 is just one side of our persona and there is a side of of that personality that we need that needs to make us cautious that that takes into consideration the trauma and the wounds because that is a layer of of what makes us us correct but where we get turned upside down is when 16 starts taking up more than one seat at the table. So our job on the repair uh, journey is to make sure that we have the, first off, to make the, a, a space at the table, that there is that wounded side of your personality, that it is real, that it's not you, it's not you talking like that, it's actually your trauma wounds talking, it's your fears, it's 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 your wrong programming, and it's the things in life that we actually need to work through in order to merge into the next best definition of self, um, but in order to do that, we need to give her a name and a space and healing from this pathological critic was just a huge step in the repair journey for me and it was absolutely life-changing now i haven't mastered it because dang the second that i step up from the table she just wants to like take over all the seats again so uh, you know I'm constantly having to say, okay, stand down, princess. Not today, princess. You don't get to have the stage today, princess. So th the reason that one day in my prayer and meditation time, <clears throat> I send up to the universe, I'm like, so why why 16? Why, why does she come out as number 16? And the reason that her number is 16 is because one plus six equals seven, and seven is a magical healing whole number. So there is a space at the table for that side of us that that uh, can tend to overtake our mind, but it's only one seat at the table. So today I want to talk about on 16 and Me, I wanted to introduce you to who 16 is. And I want to give you an example and anybody who wants to come on and, and chat with me about this, about their 16, just to help identify it. So most recently... Let's see, Mrs. Curvey, North Continent, learning about my 16 took away that chaos and craziness feeling. Exactly, when you realize it's just your, your trauma wounds trying to talk to you or, or, or just uh, us operating in fear and we go, okay, it's not me, it's my trauma talking, <laughs> then we're able, to, we're able to unscramble ourselves. So uh, let me share just a, a quick story. Uh, for those of you who know a little bit about me, or if you don't know me, I own uh, a company called Mrs. Globe. And Mrs. Globe is uh, one of the world's largest uh, pageants in the world. So I had my event in November. And, you know, as the president and owner of Mrs. Globe, I, I'm supposed to have like strong first impressions because a lot of the people who attend have never met me and you know the importance of first impressions right and I am a perfectionist in recovery and so I put a lot of pressure on myself to you know to try to do it right and and I'm thinking about 10 million things so I wake up that morning it's day one of the event I'm feeling happy I'm feeling ambitious powered. I know what I'm going to say to the ladies. I can't wait to meet everyone. I'm so proud of my team that we got to this point. I'm envisioning, I'm segmenting and envisioning a perfect day. <laughs> and I, hello Karen, and hello Dan, and I get up and I go over to the mirror and I'm having all my positive affirmation thoughts and I walk up to the mirror and there is six I look in the mirror and she looks at me and she goes, oh, 
you are bloated today. And rather than telling her, stand down princess, not today do you get to rear your head and make me feel and second guess myself, I made the mistake of engaging in the thought process and I responded why, <gasps> I am like I am oh my gosh I am how did this happen and then she retorts back well this, it's a little too late to think about it now you're gonna go out and make a first impression looking like a big fat grape that needs to be pressed right and so this whole chaos starts to happen in my head <laughs> and I go from being the head of this international company that we have worked really hard to be able to execute this event to by the power of the thoughts, and thoughts are everything, becoming that little tiny, well, uh, bloated squishy mouse in the room, all by the power of thought. And so it is so important that each and every one of us become very, very aware of our personal 16. Because if we're not aware that there that we all have a 16 in us, that we will become we will we can be we can be thought down into nothingness. See everything in life, I'm an energy practitioner, and everything in life comes down to thought. Thought is energy, and what we think is what we will become Lisa Tallarigo, so familiar, uh, Kimberly, and oh, thank you, Kimberly. I'm not going to read that one out loud. But uh, so, this show is all about learning to embrace your 16. Today, I want to have a couple of thoughts. Anybody want to come on and share about their 16? That you woke up in the morning, what she said to you? <gasps> oh my God, you're going to fail. <laughs> she tried to tell me that. Oh my gosh, no one's going to log on and listen to you. And I said, well, then I'll talk to myself. Stand down, princess, right? <laughs> Hi, Chrissy. Uh, okay, so when it comes to self judgment, um, there is a difference between self-accountability and self-judgment that none of us, not we as humans or other individuals, have the scorecard of life, that nobody has the right to, to I call it scorecarding, uh, nobody has the right to scorecard you and, and it doesn't serve a purpose to scorecard ourself, if that makes it. That doesn't mean that we don't set goals. That doesn't mean that we don't um, strive for different things. But if we have that harsh, critical voice that is, is constantly sabotaging us, we're gonna go through life like we're running in molasses. So she has a name. Her name is 16. And 16 came about because of a trauma, because of wrong programming, because of information, memos from normal land that you never got. And the whole purpose of this show is to start bringing light to that, to start making space for the fact that, that there is an unhealthy voice, a critical voice screaming out inside of you, and to learn to listen to it and try to get try to get uh, behind what's really there because either there's some unfinished wounding that we need to dive into and heal um, or it's a possible warning that you need to look at it just doesn't need to come in such a harsh package I'm getting the vision of vinegar you know vinegar is really nice as an accent piece it can add the contrast to certain flavors but if you drink vinegar straight it's pretty pretty hard stuff right okay so this this week I'm gonna be going on every Friday this week uh, one of the things I want you to watch out for is I want to watch I want you to first off make space at the table do you have a 16 are you able to hear your 16 if you don't have a 16 you rock man. you absolutely rock because <laughs> that means that you have had a pretty nice life and uh, Janet Nice saying, 16 was wrong programming. Yeah, 16 is on account of wrong programming. It could be on account of over-religious programming. It could be on account of, of 
um, being raised in a chaotic house. It could be uh, a result of trauma, be it abuse, be it abandonment. It could be wrong programming um, as far as culture goes. I mean, it all depends on, on you know, how old you were when you got the messages. But all 16 is, it's, it's the wrong programming that needs to be reprogrammed. And as a child, we had no choice but to obey the programming that was instilled in us. But as adults, we we have the freedom to be able to go and reprogram ourselves to a way that best works for us. And Mrs. Canada, I love the idea of acknowledging 16. To be seen, heard, and felt is what, um, uh, what we want most, seeing you. Am I 16? <laughs> yeah. So 16 is that person that, it, well, it's not a person. It's a, it's a, it's a persona. It's a, it's a side of our personality that rests within us. But part of stepping into the next best definition of self is really learning to make space at the table where, where, uh, you recognize that there is a 16 and to make that room to say, I am not 16. I am not the loser that 16 tells you that you are. I am not the failure. I am not the one who didn't do it right. I'm the one who doesn't deserve to be loved. You don't deserve to be loved. Who? You? Why would you deserve to be loved? That's what my 16 tells me, right? Why would you deserve to be loved? <laughs> And I, when you make that space, when all of a sudden you just stop and you go, okay, it's called thought stopping. You go, okay, stop. And I, I say, okay, 16, stop it. <laughs> Everybody deserves to be loved in life. I don't know why uh, you feel that I don't deserve to be loved, but I can't, I can't own that thought because that thought hurts me when I think about it. And, and if I expose myself to thoughts that hurt me, that's not walking in self-love. And I've made a commitment to myself and I don't commit to other people, I only commit to myself. I made a commitment to myself um, to the best of my ability to, to learn to walk in this beautiful journey called self-love. Because without self-love, there's nothing. And I say that from complete experience. Okay, um, that's all I got for today. I will see you next Friday. Be aware of your 16 when she begins to uh, chant and shout. And remember, if she tries to take up too much space at the table, love her, but tell her, not today, princess. You only get one seat at the table. Let's see. Recognizing my 16 helped me to stop going down the rabbit hole and lightens the moment for me to see that it's just 16. It's not you. It's 16. So next week, you know what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about those of you who, when you make a mistake, that 16 just berates you. How many of you just struggle with mistake? <laughs> Oops, I'm the first one with my hand up in the room. Okay, next week, back at uh, 9.30 Pacific time, and we're talking about 16 and me and what to do when she bashes us with a mistake. Lots of love, mahalo, and I, you guys have a great weekend.